Hello grade 11 biology class. Welcome back to the next lecture. This is lesson eight, large intestine and appendix. Uh, as you can see, uh, the key points above me, I have abbreviated large intestine into LI for key point one. So that's large intestine parts. Second key point is the functions of the large intestine. Uh, third key point is the appendix and fourth is appendicitis. Two things that you've probably heard of, uh, appendicitis being um, if we think about the parts of the word, itis is inflammation, so that's inflammation of the appendix, appendicitis. Um, this is the second last lecture of the unit, lesson nine is the last one, uh, so I appreciate uh, if you've kept up throughout this unit, and let's get rolling. Yes, okay. So, we're going to talk about the large intestine first, aka the colon, if we talk about colon cancer. We're talking about cancer of the large intestine. So the large intestine is this part right here that goes around the outside. The small intestine is this wiggly bit, wiggly, 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 goes over here, goes over here, goes over here, goes over here, gets the large intestine, and the large intestine actually starts in the bottom right quadrant of your stomach. So the part that goes up is called the ascending colon. So I'd highlight or circle that part in your diagram because the ascending colon is part one. The part that crosses the, the stomach is transverse colon. That's over here. The transverse colon goes across, and the descending colon goes down. We then get a little bit of an S shape here. That is the sigmoid colon with the rectum, and then the anus. The anus is the sphincter um, that keeps that allows fecal matter to go in, not in, out. Oh wow. Okay. Don't clip that. Um, here we go. So the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and then the rectum and anus. So the three main parts of the ascending, transverse, and descending colon. Let's continue. So the first part, the ascending colon is the first of four sections of the large intestine. It is connected to the small intestine by a section of the bowel called the cecum. So the cecum connects the large and the small intestine. A transverse colon hangs off of the stomach, so it goes along the top, that is this portion right here, it hangs off of the stomach, um, and is attached to it by a large fold of peritoneum, which is just connective tissue. The descending colon in the digestive system is to store feces that will be emptied into the rectum, so that is down the left-hand side of your uh, stomach. Um, the sigmoid colon is the part of the large intestine after the descending colon and before the rectum it is an S port, uh, part. That's why it is known as the sigmoid colon. Uh, and remember to pause and write these things down as it's very important information. Uh, the walls of the sigmoid colon are muscular and contract to increase pressure inside the colon, causing the stool to move into the rectum. So essentially that's what happens when you push, that so you're activating your sigmoid colon. Uh, the rectum is the last section of the large intestine. It holds the formed feces awaiting elimination by a defecation. That's just a fancy way of saying pooping. Just so you know. The rectum is the last section of the large intestine. It holds poop before you poop. That's what it means. So the anus is the sphincter from which the excrement is removed. The anus is the sphincter which you poop through. That is what it means. Um, we're all fairly familiar. So the large intestine um, is very important because it houses over 700 species of bacteria that perform a variety of functions as well as fungi and protozoa. And all of these things are very important to keep us healthy. Uh, the microbes in a human distal gut, so that's in the large intestine, often number in the vicinity of 100 trillion and can weigh around 200 grams. So that's like quite a lot of bacteria, 100 trillion. This is in, essentially under the functions of um, the large intestine. So the microbes in a human distal gut in the large intestine are 100 trillion. Um, gases like methane and hydrogen sulfide are created by bacteria, and that's what makes our fart smell. But it's very important for the breakdown of food and to form our stool into something that um, can be eliminated easily. So the large intestine also absorbs salts. Uh, it absorbs a lot of water. And that is its main function for absorption, is it takes in water. Um, when too much water is absorbed, we're constipated. But when too little water is absorbed, we get diarrhea. 
Um, so the large intestine regulates that. As long as you're not sick, um, you should have normal stools uh, because the large intestine will be able to take in the proper amounts of water. Uh, if it's too much being absorbed, you have constipation. When it's too little, diarrhea. It also absorbs a lot of vitamins. Uh, vitamins that have made it through the small intestine uh, get absorbed with the water in the large intestine. So bacteria that are present in some B vitamins and K vitamins um, which are then absorbed. So that bacteria actually makes these vitamins and then you can absorb the vitamins. Without that bacteria, you wouldn't be able to make these vitamins. Uh, within the large intestine, you can also have polyps. Now polyps are small clumps of cells that form on the inner lining of the colon that can develop into colon cancer. So they are kind of like the beginning stages of colon cancer. Uh, there are lumps within the colon and they can be removed when there's not very many of them but often there can be a lot of them, which is um, fairly concerning in terms of that person developing colon cancer. <clears throat> um, so if you develop colon cancer and uh, you need to have part of it removed, you may end up with a stoma, uh, which is essentially um, an area on your stomach where your fecal matter would need to come out. Now it's completely different because it doesn't have as much time to go through uh, or to absorb the water uh, or to compact. So um, check out these two videos, they're in your notes. Uh, one is a colonoscopy polyp removal. They actually get rid of polyps. And the other is an interesting video about how she takes care of her uh, colostomy bag and her stoma. Uh, it's a very interesting process. Uh, takes a little bit of time each day, uh, but she can carry on a mostly normal life, which is pretty good. Um, so we're gonna move on to the appendix. So this is the cecum that attaches the small intestine to the large intestine. And then the appendix is the small interesting tail that comes off of the cecum. So it's right at the beginning of the large intestine. It is a finger-like blind ended, which means it's closed end on one, uh, on one side. It's a tube that connects to the cecum, a small bag-like structure on the side of our intestines. Uh, it's just like a finger projection. Some of them are really long, some of them are short. The human appendix averages nine centimeters in length, so that's about three inches. That's almost four inches. No, sorry. <laughs> that's about three and a half inches, uh, but can range from five centimeters to 35 centimeters, which is very, very long. 35 centimeters is over a foot long, um, so it can range. The appendix used to be assumed that it was useless. Uh, they assumed that for a very long time because when you removed it, nothing really happened, judged by an absence of side effects following its removal. But the notion that the appendix is only vestigial, uh, then th that notion that the appendix is vestigial became widely held. And what that means is that it's just left over from something previously. No longer holds a function, but isn't completely gone yet. Uh, in 2007, Duke University proposed that uh, the appendix serves as a haven for useful bacteria when illness flushes the bacteria from the rest of the intestines. So if you have diarrhea and a lot of the bacteria and the important things that you need are flushed from your large intestine, you have a little reserve in your appendix that is able to replenish that and it's able to get you back to 100% more quickly. Um, so the theory is now that the appendix is a reservoir for bacteria that could repopulate the gut flora. So essentially repopulate all the bacteria and fungi uh, in your gut, uh, in the digestive system following a bout of diarrhea or to boost it following a mild illness. Uh, it might even produce early defenses that prevent deadly diseases. Um, there's lots and lots of research and we learn more and more about all parts of your body all the time. Uh, appendicitis is when you have inflammation of the appendix. Itis is inflammation, appendix is the appendix. Appendicitis is characterized by inflammation of the appendix. Things can get caught in it and make it inflamed. So essentially if it gets blocked up, it can be all angry as things won't be able to get out, things will fester uh, and it will become infected. So appendicitis usually requires the removal of the inflamed appendix in an appendectomy. So appendectomy is removal of the appendix because of appendicitis. Check out a couple of videos here. Um, they're pretty interesting um, about appendicitis and the removal. They actually don't need to cut you open anymore. They just poke a couple of holes in you 
um, more information on the YouTube videos and if you're interested ask me about it what I'd like you to do now there's two research sheets for you to do one about a pet the appendix and appendicitis and the other about poop or fecal matter I guess would be this more scientific term but oh well um, when those are done uh, you can move on to lesson nine I appreciate you guys watching and if you have any questions at all about what you've seen today please please let me know uh, and thanks very much